It's November the 8th, 2019, and deep within the jungles of Thailand, a determined team scour the steep slopes of Doi American. It means American Mountain. Part of the team is Major Daniel Jackson of the US Air Force and Air Chief Marshal Sakpanit Promtep of the Royal Thai Air Force. The mountain's name hints towards a long forgotten relic of war and a lost soul. Both part of a remarkable story that has inspired Daniel and Sack Pinnett to make the expedition to this site. I don't know why, but I have a really strong feeling we should check over there. Quiet settles on the group as they focus on their search, but the silence is suddenly pierced by the squealing of Daniel's detector. Oh my God, I found something. He signals the team and drops to the ground, digging carefully. I can't believe it, we found it. From the depths of the thick earth, he pulls something man-made, a nine-inch piece of metal lined with bolts, attached a data plate with the inscription, Drain Boss, 5 Amp, 24 Volt, Out Motor. This piece of metal is no ordinary scrap. It's a piece from a P-51C Mustang. But what is an American World War II fighter plane doing in the middle of the Thai jungle? And why is this wreck so important? It's November the 11th, 1944. Five Thai fighters are in the air. The Royal Thai Air Force pilots scour the skies on the urgent lookout for the enemy. American planes. These pilots, also very close friends, have split into the two groups to cover more area. It doesn't take long before Flight Lieutenant Chelemgiat Watanangora spots eight American aircraft ahead. But there are a lot of them. The American formation is of 16 planes in three layers, four P-51C Mustangs down low to strafe, four P-51C Mustangs in the middle to cover the strafers, and one P-51C Mustang and seven P-38J Lightnings as top cover. Chelemgia grits his teeth. He signals to Flight Sergeant Wad Thantorn Como beside him. There's no time to wait for the others. He's going in to engage. He thrusts his joystick forward and dives straight at a group of the enemy planes. The American side is made up of P-51 Mustangs and P-38 Lightnings, powerful modern aircraft with cutting edge capabilities. But the Thais field the Nakajima Ki-27B, which they affectionately nickname Sparrow. The Sparrows are completely outclassed in this conflict. Originally built by the Japanese in 1938, they're slow with fixed wheel undercarriages and armed with only two rifle caliber machine guns. Chelemgiat shoots first. In slow motion, the bullets stream out towards the P-38s. His aim is true and fire rips into one of the P-38s. It passes through the fuel tank on the right wing and the P-38 catches fire and is forced to turn away. But as he tries to edge to target another plane, the Americans return fire with a wall of lead. It's totally one-sided, and he feels his aircraft rocked as bullets slam into the undercarriage. Then, the engine cowling is totally shot away. The smell of burning hits him as his engine blooms into fire. The aircraft lurches underneath him, and he dives away. The fight's over, and there's nothing he can do about it. He checks his six. The Americans are carrying on with the mission, fortunately for him. He can get down. He checks for the nearest airfield, Spotting Lampang airfield below, there's no choice but for him to set down there. Faced with few options, Chalermgiat resolves to use a falling leaf maneuver, carefully using his rudder to coax a plane into side-to-side -side motion, slowly dropping towards the ground with each traverse. The earth rushes up to meet him as he drops closer and closer towards land. There's a violent crash as Chalermgiat's sparrow makes contact and his damaged undercarriage causes his wheel to dig into the ground, throwing up dust and dirt. He barely has time to register the successful landing before he realizes that the airfield is under attack from the strafing P-51s. The second he comes to a stop, Chelemgiet jumps out and starts to run, clearing his sparrow. When he suddenly remembers, he's left his valuable parachute still inside the aircraft. He turns back and reaches to grab it from the cockpit jumping down just as a deafening crack of machine gun fire fills the air. Chelemgiat is hit and his sparrow is in flames, but out of nowhere, a sturdily built airman grabs Chelemgiat, hoists him up and sprints for cover just as the sparrow erupts in an explosion, finally defeated. 
One TIE fighter is down. Four remain. Back above, Wad Santornkamol watches as smoke rises from the runway, hoping his friend made it out. He did what he could to keep the enemy distracted, and now he searches for a target from the plentiful selection of enemy combatants eager to take him down. He sees four planes, three P-38s and one P-51C Mustang, and decides he's going in. He uses his height advantage to eke as much speed as he can from a sparrow and fires. The Americans break and are all over him. He glances into his mirror and spots another P-51 glued to his tail, preparing to fire. What freezes. Time slows for just a moment and then instinct kicks in. He wrenches his joystick, nimbly pulling out, just as the four 50 caliber machine guns light up, sending a heavy storm of lead down range. Narrowly dodging the rain of fire, Wad swings around, only to see the other enemy aircraft coming in from all angles. But refusing to be shaken, he opens fire on the closest one. But the chatter of his machine guns is drowned out by the roar of the Americans' guns. Another hailstorm of bullets zips towards him, and this time they find their mark. Wad's fuel tank is hit and ignites, engulfing him in flames. The Inferno takes hold instantly as he scrambles to unbuckle himself. The flames burn his skin, and the sparrow begins to plummet. But through the pain and increasing g-force, he manages to get up, heave the canopy back. He can't afford hesitation. Wad jumps, just clearing the tail of the plane. The sound of air rushes past Wad's ears. It's deafening as he struggles to catch his breath with the force of it. He pulls at the cord on his parachute, and thankfully, it opens. He's gritting his teeth through the pain. The quiet is broken by the approaching sound of an engine droning louder and louder. A Mustang comes into sight, heading straight for him. Thousands of feet in the air, there's nothing Wad can do but watch it come for him. The Mustang bears right down upon him, the dark, uncompromising barrels of its four machine guns staring into him. Wad can't bear it and closes his eyes, the engine roaring in his ears louder and louder. He braces himself, then quiet. The roaring engine fades. A gentle breeze rushes in Wad's ears as he continues to fall gently towards the jungle. He cautiously opens one eye to see the Mustang climbing away out of sight. Three more Mustangs fly by soon after, but make no attempt to attack Wad. Instead, the American pilots are curious to get a closer look at the face of their foe, peering at him through their canopies before offering a salute and flying away. Wad waves back a goodbye as they fade into the distance. Another Thai pilot is down. Three Thai fighters remain. Sergeant Tada Beo Kaimuk is infuriated. They were supposed to have taken off together, but due to engine trouble on his sparrow, he was lagging behind. But now he's in the fray, mixing it up with the three P-38s and a Mustang. Tada is unfazed, instead barreling head on at a P-51. Both planes fire right at each other and the bullets from either side cross in mid-air. Through the intense fire, Tada becomes aware of bullets passing right by his head, but none hit him or the plane. He's spurred on by the success of his charge. He searches for more targets, passing close to multiple enemy aircraft, only for them to evade him by moving aside and upwards. Too distracted by chasing enemy aircraft, Tada suddenly realizes he's been on a straight course for too long leaving an opportunity for the enemy to loop round behind him. He quickly yanks the joystick to turn around, just as three P-38s dive down on him from above. Tada thinks quickly and opens full throttle, rushing at another group of enemy fighters, diving beneath them at the last minute. Using his slower but more nimble Sparrow, he's able to outmaneuver the Americans, slipping beneath the enemy aircraft and using them as cover. Unbeknownst to Tada, Thai airmen on the ground watch him as he opens fire on the enemy aircraft on the American squadron. They're in awe of Tada's fearlessness and nimble maneuvers. They cheer him on as the single sparrow breaks up the American formation and the enemy pilots attempt to respond. Tada presses an attack on an American flying ahead, but this time it's a trick. Another maneuvers behind him and opens fire. Please support the channel, comment, like and subscribe on this video. Bullets stream down on Tada. One pierces the canopy, streaking past his head and hitting his gun sight and spiraling through his oil tank. Oil sprays across the cockpit, 
as another bullet strikes one of his machine guns, jamming it. Slick with oil, injured, and with only one machine gun left, Tada knows it's over. Content with having done his best, he shuts down the engine and makes a dive out of the action for a nearby rice paddy. All three aircraft from the first group are down. The last two Thai fighters in the air are Pilot Officer Kamrop Bliankam and Flight Sergeant Third Class Chuladit Dekanchorn. The two pilots have been directed northeast by the ground crew using a cloth in the shape of an arrow near the airfield. Soon enough, the group of three P-38 Lightnings and a Mustang appear. Chuladit looks to his flight leader and Kamrop nods. The men know the odds. Pushing fear from their minds, they open the throttle. Chuladit makes straight to intercept them. In his excitement, he effectively takes charge of the flight. But Kamrop is unbothered. Pecking order becomes a meaningless idea when in the face of action. The two pilots climb higher and higher until at 4,500 meters, Chuladit closes his eyes and takes a split second to utter a prayer as he prepares his guns. Chuladit opens his eyes. He pulls on the trigger and opens fire across the enemy leader while Kamrop attacks the rest of the enemy aircraft. Once again, the Americans are thrown into disarray. The formation breaks up and a dogfight begins. Kamrop instinctively covers his friend, firing at a P-38 that tries to pursue Chuladit. In the chaos, bullets fly all around Chuladit, but somehow miss him and his aircraft. He takes a moment to thank the Lord Buddha for blessing him. Planes on both sides are hit. But Chuladit suddenly feels his plane pitch violently, as if rocked by unseen forces. Chuladip grapples for control as his plane rolls uncontrollably due to the prop wash of the enemy planes. He's in a death spin. The Mustang tries its luck as Chuladip is still spinning, but the shots miss due to the plane's erratic whirling. Finally, his plane starts to ease back into level flight and Chuladip begins to recover, although he has little time to do so. The fight descends to 2,500 meters as Chuladip tries to bring the enemy down to an easier altitude. He finds himself battling with a Mustang all the way. It seems like every plane exchanges fire with him as the sky is flooded with deafening gunfire and Chuladit's cockpit is engulfed in the putrid scent of sulfur. But he never stops, never stays still. Weaving and dodging so much, the enemy can serve their fire. Confident and triumphant, Chuladit fearlessly turns around and flies up to meet a diving Mustang. The two open fire and tracers pass each other through the air as Chuladit prays once more. As he closes his eyes, there's a bang from the front of his engine and a sparrow shakes twice as the engine dies. He opens his eyes as the glide downwards begins. The enemy Mustang notices and attempts to chase the drifting plane, but Chuladit's prayers are once again answered as anti-aircraft fire on the ground forces the Mustang away. Chuladit comes down hard and fast, slamming loudly into a rice paddy at the end of the runway before coasting into a termite mound. The plane cartwheels over the mound and throws him out of his seat, knocking him unconscious. He can't even tell how much time has passed by the time he wakes up, struggling to open his eyes to find himself lying in a muddy drainage ditch. He stares at the sky and wonders what happened to his fellow pilots and his partner Cam Rock. Four down, one left. Camrock is the last man standing. He fights his battle alone. Separated from his wingman during the start of the dogfight, Camrock struggles to get into an advantageous position. He uses tricks combined with the Sparrow's agility to stay in the air, dropping beneath one fighter and rolling to avoid the fire of another. He's on his own though, and he knows his best bet is to head for the mountains and use his superior maneuverability. He's flown a lot down there before, and he knows the topography. If he can get low, perhaps he can outwit his opponent. Camrock breathes deeply, pushes forward on the yoke and dives, now pursued by a lone P-51. He gets down to a jungle-covered ridgeline, speeding along it all the while, trying to dodge the fire of the P-51 on his tail. He sees bullets fly past him and makes out a trench leading to the mountain in the distance. He slips into the trench, weaving through the jungle and rocks, all the while his pursuer in tow. Inside the P-51, 2nd Lieutenant Henry F. Minko 
curses as he tries to land a hit on the enemy, but Camrock continues to weave and dodge masterfully. I have you now. The pilot of the P-51 breathes, waits, and times his fire. It's a hit. Bullets strike the sparrow, hitting the parachute and footrest, and casting shrapnel into Camrop's right leg. Camrop instantly loses feeling in his leg and the ability to properly control his aircraft. Unable to properly maneuver, he's easy prey now and the enemy moves in for the kill. He tries to fight the pain, determined he won't die like this. The pain in his leg is searing and the P-51 roars savagely behind him, but he remains focused. Camrock can't fight back or escape. There's nowhere to hide, even if he broke to try and run and escape. The Mustang with twice his speed would surely catch him. Coming to the end of the trench run, he takes his sparrow in a straight line right at the mountain. Henry Minko knows the tie is out of options and he prepares to deliver the final blow. As he edges closer, his crosshairs drift across the silhouette of Camrock and his sparrow. Henry presses down on the trigger unleashing the wrath of his 450 caliber machine guns. A torrent of tracers fly over Camrop's head and into the mountain in front of him. Camrop makes small evasive actions but stays on course. But Henry hasn't given up. He keeps the trigger held as he barrels closer and closer to his slow flying target. At the last moment, just above the treetops, Camrop yanks back on the stick. The P-51 has nowhere to go. He zips underneath the TIE fighter, but straight ahead of him is the mountainside. In the heat of battle, he's not noticed that he's put himself into a trap. Too low to turn left or right, Henry instinctively pulls up to avoid the mountain, but he's pulling up with a TIE fighter behind him now. Inside the sparrow, Camrop sees the P-51 pull up and fill his sights. Without hesitation, he presses on the trigger and the two machine guns open up. The bullets strike the P-51, and through the telescopic sight, Camrop can clearly see the look of surprise on the pilot's face. Henry and his Mustang swerve off and spin in a large circle, before dropping down and falling to the forest floor. As the aviation fuel of Henry's plane lights, a bright fireball bursts into the sky. Camrop lifts his hand to cover his eyes, then opens them, only to see a column of black smoke rising skywards to the mountain. Unable to comprehend the sadness and loss of life of a fellow pilot, whatever side they might belong to, Camrock closes his eyes and prays. Please go to a better place and don't think of revenge if we meet in the next life. He takes a deep breath and assesses himself. Oil is leaking from his sparrow. It's now flowing faster and he's losing blood from the wound in his leg. He immediately turns towards the airfield However, to his dismay, he sees Chelemgiat's plane engulfed in flames in the middle of the runway, with a P-38 circling. Sadness hits Camrock, but with 10 minutes of fuel left, he needs a plan. Racking his brain, he remembers a small airstrip at a sugar plant. It's soon in sight, and nursing his injured sparrow, he manages to set down on the runway and come to a stop. Workers from the sugar plant help him out with a battered sparrow and take him to hospital. At the hospital, all five pilots and friends are reunited. After fighting his injuries for two days, Wud lost his battle for life. The men are told. A heavy silence settles upon the four remaining friends. They're in disbelief. Chuladit stares through an open window at the black mountains in the distance. A cold wind blows down and into the hospital room chilling the air. He and the remaining pilots sit in silence as no words are needed to be said, as they're sure they see a shadow move from bed to bed, and they know their friend has come to say goodbye. The search party descends down the mountain. The discovery of the fuel pump means that for the first time since that fateful day, Henry Minko's final resting place has been located. After years of research, Major Daniel and Air Chief Marshal Sackpinet and Hack Hackinson have found the needle in the haystack. Thanks to the effort of those men and many others, the DPAA announced in January 2024 they are going to excavate the site in the hope of finding and repatriating Minko's remains. We'd like to thank Major Daniel Jackson for approaching us with this story and providing all the material needed to tell it. Any errors are entirely our own. <laughs>